Well, hello and welcome back to Lights and Perfection. You are here for another moment in the Word. My name's Chris. Today's moment in the Word, we're going to discuss Jude verse 24. And I'll probably dovetail into a lot of context. But first, let's go ahead and read this passage of Scripture. And today again, Jude 24. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It reads this, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And on to verse 25 reads, To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, as I was meditating on this scripture, a thought came to mind. And it was a thought that invokes the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, it not, not like invoking in some weird uh, contemplative, meditative way, but just in a reflection of who Jesus is and to be able to behold him in his glory and the work that he accomplished on the cross at Calvary and just how significant it is in our lives. And as I was reflecting on this, it brought me back to the moment I was saved and I knew that I knew that I knew that God had spoken to me. And that power that came into my life to bring transformation, to make me into a new creation as you yourselves are very well aware of. But you know, as time goes on, we begin to forget the power of God and forget to apply that power in our lives through faith alone. And as the scripture read, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. So not only was the power of God able to save you and to deliver you, but it is able to keep you from stumbling. Now I know maybe in today's Christian circles, we see a lot of people where the common theme seems to be backsliding. I know many people that had professed Christianity and, and were delivered from amazing, just amazing deliverances from sin in their life and then reverted back to it. And you know, my wife and I, we were reflecting upon this idea in the church and how, how you know, it's so easy to fall away from understanding the true power of God through Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross. How easy it was in the beginning to, to look to Jesus and say, wow, he is all powerful. And today we look to him and just think, well, he's just all forgiving. And while that's true, there's another side to the coin, brothers and sisters, and that is he is able, he is powerful to be able to keep you from even stumbling. You know, there's many, many today in, in our Christian circles that would say, well, that's impossible because we're going to sin in thought, word, and deed every day. But when I read the scriptures, now, don't, don't get me wrong here. I have to step back and read the scriptures, not from a theological construct that I was delivered unto or that I was taught, but just from what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Brothers and sisters, when I read that passage of scripture, I recognize that the other side of the coin is the power of God to save you, but also to keep you. It's not just forgiveness. Forgiveness is a major component, but it's not to be separated from the power of God to transform. I reflect on all the biblical examples of people that, like the woman with the issue of blood that said, if I just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I'll be healed. You know, I wonder if we would take that same pose about the sin in our lives. I wonder, brothers and sisters, if we would be able to reflect upon the power of Jesus Christ and stop just coming to him for forgiveness, but to come to him for transformation through the power of the cross in our lives. Jesus made so many radical statements, such like, if anyone denies himself and takes up his cross and follows him, that we must deny ourselves rather, take up our cross and follow him, that if we don't deny ourselves, that we're not even worthy to be called by his name. And you know, when I reflect on that and I reflect on the sinfulness that has just been so engulfed in today's church, I, I wonder, have people forgotten about the power of God? 
We're so ready to receive forgiveness, but are we ready to receive power to deliver us from the power of sin? You know, I think when we come to the cross initially, we've experienced that. We've experienced the magnitude of our sin in light of the magnitude of God's grace. And, and they just clash together and this, this heavenly power comes upon us and transforms us and makes us a new creation. But I wonder, are we living out of that new creation? Are we living from within that new creation? Are we allowing the power of God to keep us from stumbling? There's another passage of scripture that I like to reflect on in regards to this. It's something that the Apostle Peter wrote in 2 Peter, the first chapter. And he speaks about many things. And I'll start from verse 5 over to verse 11. And it reads this. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling an election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so thankful to God for his word that gives us the right perspective, the tools that when applied through faith can keep us from stumbling. When we keep our gaze upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the scriptures say that he can keep us from stumbling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. In saying that, it is a joyous thing for Jesus to work the work of salvation in your life. There's another scripture, and I think it's, it might be in Philippians. It says, For it is God who worketh in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And so it is, brothers and sisters. Again, I think a common theme today that needs to be put in check, or rather balanced correctly with the scriptures, is that not only does Jesus forgive, but he also has the power to save us from our sins. And so, brothers and sisters, we want to approach Christ through faith, through the eyes of hope in what he has promised us in his word, that he is able to keep us from stumbling. This really encouraged me because there's times that my mind goes crazy, that the flesh wages war against the spirit of God within me. And, and I feel the pressure and I feel the groaning and the birth pangs from within, the fight against good and evil, even from within my own body in those times that I'm sure you're well aware of as well, brothers and sisters, the temptations that we go through. We're not promised to be exempt from temptations, but we are promised to have the power of Jesus Christ to be able to overcome sin. And today, I think it's just run so rampant that people just accept sin as the normalcy, as if forgiveness is a license to sin. And maybe we wouldn't say that with our words, but, but maybe we say it with our actions. And so, brothers and sisters, this is just a quick moment in the Word to reflect on what Jude said in verse 24 and also what Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-11. through 11, To see that we have been given everything, as Peter said in the beginning of chapter 1, 2 Peter, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Jesus Christ is able to save us, brothers and sisters, but he's also able to keep us for the day that he returns. The question is, for you and also for me, do we really believe that Jesus has the power to keep us from stumbling in the here and now? That's not a question I need you to answer to me. 
It's a question that we need to reflect on before the God of heaven so that we can renew our minds and be transformed by that renewing through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I'm excited because the word of God says that he's able to keep me from stumbling. And I don't know about you, but temptation fights against me day in and day out. And it's refreshing to be able to look to Jesus and say, wow, you already paid the price for me to be able to overcome this. And it is not in my strength, but in his strength. And therefore, brothers and sisters, you, I, all of us as believers in Jesus Christ can do all things through Christ through who strengthens us. Well, thank you once again for tuning in. We are just so overwhelmed by God's goodness and just want to share that with you. And so we just pray that the Lord would continue to bless you and keep you that he would make his face to shine upon you, that he would be gracious unto you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you.